What's good gamers? I'm about to start this video with a very hot take. So get your pitchforks ready. I'm fully prepared for that. But Shadowlands should have been and could have been a phenomenal expansion. I know many of you might be sitting there going, what is he talking about? Well, let me expand on that a little bit. The lore of Shadowlands was actually phenomenal. It was actually really good. In fact, I would go so far as to say the lore in BFA and Shadowlands was phenomenal. And I can back this up with actual facts, by the way. What was the most exciting time in both BFA and Shadowlands from a lore perspective. The launch. Let him go. Like, don't tell me that anyone wasn't excited for the launch of Shadowlands. Of course they were. Shadowlands broke records in terms of sales. BFA actually set up uh, the records that Shadowlands crushed. People were super excited. And the reason they were excited was the lore. Now, many of you might be saying, but Akulon, I thought you said that the lore in Shadowlands sucked. And I did. I, I, can't, I can't deny that. But since then, I've done a lot of reading, uh, specifically reading about how to write, how to write good stories, what does a good story look like, and something started to emerge that previously, I would always just sort of voice as you have world building and then you have individual micro stories, but now that I have a lot more information and I, I dare I say I'm a little bit more educated on the matter, uh, I've come to realize that there are two elements to every great story. There is the lore and then there is the narrative. And previously, I sort of just always accepted that, yeah, okay, you have narrative and you have narration and you have that. But really, it's the lore, right? Everything is about the lore and then the explanation of these two things. Now, in order for you to understand why I say Shadowlands was actually a phenomenal expansion, or could have been a phenomenal expansion, and from a lore perspective was a phenomenal expansion, you first have to understand what the difference is between lore and narrative. Now, I hope that Holy, you know, will have something really cool on the screen here to help you understand all of this, but I'm just going to mouth off, right, like I usually do, and hopefully Holy and you can follow along on the journey. All right, so lore is a point-based system, and I'll explain it with an example. If you ask me, what is the lore of World of Warcraft? In other words, you came to me and you said, okay, bro, what is World of Warcraft? Why should I play World of Warcraft? I will go, right, World of Warcraft, it's Azeroth, she's a planet, she's also a titan kind of thing, but we live on this planet, and uh, this planet is in the Great Beyond, and around the Great Beyond, there's these cosmological forces, we don't know much about them, but we know what they are, and we know that they attack us sometimes, but some of them seem to help us, although we're not sure exactly about that, uh, but you have the Void, and there are these giant shadow monsters, and we have demons that constantly attack us, and then we have the Horde, which is like orcs and taurins and trolls and goblins and blood elves and undead and shit. And then we have the Alliance on the other side, which is like humans and dwarfs and, you know, all the normal races, as you will. And, and they are sort of at war, but not really, not anymore, at least. Uh, but that is what I've just done here is I have given you a list of things that qualifies as lore. I have literally not told you anything about the real relationships or the actual stories within any of those elements. I have just given you the world. I've just told you what the world is all about. That's the lore. The narrative is when you start diving into those. So what does the lives of people on Azeroth look like? What does it consist of? It's constant war. How does that war affect the different people? The relationships between different people why is the Horde and the Alliance at war with one another? Talk to me, BlizzCon. Now, you'll see why this video links up with Dragonflight in a second, because I happen to believe that Dragonflight was also a phenomenal expansion from a lore perspective. 
All you have to understand is that lore and narrative have an incredibly tight-knit relationship. Lore can exist without narrative. Narrative can never exist without lore. You, you require the lore to be there in order for the narrative, because narrative is just tying lore elements together. Lore will almost always be perceived as good as the narrative is. Now, the reason you like speculation channels like myself, uh, like Pyromancer, like Palila and Taliesin even, um, even though, you know, even Soul So Breezy does a lot of lore videos and, and stuff of that nature. Uh, the reason you like channels like that, uh, Noble, uh, Platinum, WoW, uh, Doran's Movies, all of these creators, phenomenal creators in their own right, um, the reason you like watching their content is they create narratives around the lore. Noble, for example, famously creates lore videos. But when you watch Noble's videos, he tells a story, right? And that's how he uses narrative in order to explain the lore. And you fall in love with that because people love narratives. Lore is great, but it doesn't compete with narrative. Okay, so now that you understand that, let's talk Shadowlands and then we'll tie it into Dragonflight. I first came to this realization when I started to do some, some inward thinking. I started to do some introspection. Because I wanted to understand something. For the last three expansions, this is BFA, Shadowlands, and Dragonflight, I was super, super excited for the game in like the first three or four months. Like I was beyond excited for the game. And then slowly, as the game continued on, this would taper off and I would find myself disliking the game more and more as things go on. And I think Dragonflight is sort of the culmination of that. I was super excited for Dragonflight. We were finally going to learn about the dragons, the early days of Nalfarian, uh, the titans, and how the titans are tied into the world. And it, it just sort of tapered off again. And, and at first, my thinking was, am I just allowing negativity from other people to get to me? Uh, am I just, you know, like what people love to say, oh, you're just doing it for negative clicks. But I think most of you that know me know that I don't chase whatever the popular opinion is. I have my own opinions and I tend to voice them whenever the hell I want and however I want, sometimes to my detriment, but sometimes to, to the benefit of all, I, I would hope. And then it hit me. The narrative design for World of Warcraft absolutely blows hobo penis. And I mean badly. But funnily enough, not the leveling narrative. Which is why I'm always so excited in the first few months. Leveling in Dragonflight was phenomenal. There were so many really good quests, so many really good stories, and so many like future lore elements that could be explored in the narrative later on was laid down, and I got excited for that. I got super excited for that. And then I started asking myself, okay, but why then? Why is the lore and the narrative so good? in the leveling experience, because this was true for Shadowlands and this was true for BFA, but then it sort of tapers off. Why does it fall off? And I realized something. It tapers off because of what I think, really, and this is speculation, this is speculation, so I might be wrong. You can let me know if you think I am. But I think the problem is twofold. One is a lack of planning. In other words, the writers have a broad concept of where they want the story to go. They, they sort of have these cool ideas of where they think the story should go. And then they start writing uh, these cool ideas. They start creating the narrative around these cool ideas. And it really works in the leveling experience because they have a ton of time. And this is also seemingly one of the few times where the writers and the quest designers work very closely together and they ensure that the, the starting point, the foundation from which we play, really has the opportunity to breathe and to, to expand and to take up the space that it requires in order to tell a good story. Because that's the thing. Stories require time. 
you, you can't just rush a story. Uh, you, you can't take something like The Lord of the Rings and turn it into a 10-page essay and think that that 10-page essay is going to be anywhere near as good as the actual Lord of the Rings book. You can do a synopsis and you can sort of give me all the broad stroke elements of the book, but you'll never be able to capture the magic of the book. Stories take time. And they usually have a lot of time. They usually have about two years at the start to create the narrative for the questing experience. So the second thing that I think really ruins it is time. You see, once we get into the actual patch cycle of things, we already know that World of Warcraft has a Team 2 that designs all of the patch content, and one might argue that Team 2 is a lot smaller than Team 1, at least how it used to be. So now the narrative designers, the actual writers of the game, they're forced to take shortcuts. They're forced to cut down on the story because they don't have 200, 300 quest designers all working and being able to design as many quests as they require. And so they're forced to pick and choose their battles a lot more carefully. They're forced to skip over certain crucial exposition points because they know that they want Veronoth to join the dragons. But Veronoth needs to join the dragons. But in order to get that story to a place where it kind of makes logical sense that Veronoth would join the dragons, it requires a lot more developers and a lot more time than what they actually have available to them. And so they're forced to skip over these periods because, again, lack of planning and a lack of time. You can do uh, a lot if you don't have enough time if your planning is solid. If you, know, if you knew that you wanted Veronoth to always join the dragons right from the start because Veronoth is going to play a part in the next expansion, you could already start setting it up in the leveling experience that Veronoth may in fact turn on her brothers and sisters. And you could explore that throughout all the patches until you get to the patch where Veronoth now finally walks over. But that only happens if you have that plan ahead of time and you know that that is where you're about to go. I would argue that in Shadowlands, BFA, and in Dragonflight, it was that element of the story that was completely lost. They didn't know where they wanted to go with the story. They made it up as they went along. But maybe they had broad ideas of what should come next, but they made it up as they went. And... Probably a lot of that was influenced by the design and development of the next expansion. As the narrators were now writing the next expansion, they were like, oh shit, we actually want to use Veronoth here, so let's 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 save her. Let's bring her over to the dragons, because that would be really cool. And now you have a bunch of small little rewrites that really interfere with your plans. And no expansion is more evident of rewrites than Shadowlands. We've gone through this multiple times in the past. There's been multiple videos where I have discussed all of the ways in which Shadowlands was rewritten. And, and it's so clear to see for anyone that followed the lore back then. So why am I excited for The War Within and for Midnight and for The Last Titan? Well, because remember what I said, the, the main problem in what I argue is Dragonflight, Shadowlands and BFA was a lack of planning. The lack of time, yes, that plays a role, but that only really plays a role if you don't know exactly where you're going, if you don't have a plan. Well, we know that the war within Sh uh, Midnight and The Last Titan, we know that there is a plan. We know that Chris Metzen has already designed and developed the plan. They know exactly what the story is going to be for The Last Titan. All of those elements have already been planned out. So now they are afforded a lot more time, you see, because even if they don't have as much time per patch in order to get the story out, because they know already now what the story is going to look like a year from now or two years from now, they can already start exploring the things that they need to happen, the exposition of the story 
from patch one, from the leveling experience, they can already start exploring the world. And I do believe that this is going to be a phenomenal resurgence in the storytelling of World of Warcraft, because one thing became clear to me, the writers of World of Warcraft are a bunch of gardeners. Now, gardening is a term in writing. I'm not going to go into it. I, I went into it in the last video. But basically, gardeners just sort of write where the story takes them. The problem is that if the story takes you in a direction that the next expansion isn't going to go in, now you have problems because you've sort of written yourself into corners here, and then you have to skip a bunch of exposition in order to get yourself out of those corners. But now they have an architect, and gardeners in video games specifically do phenomenally well when they have an architect that creates the narrative design. The reason I made this video, the reason I, I, I you know, sort of spoke about this is in my video yesterday where I spoke about the World Soul Saga, uh, a lot of comments was actually, oh, they still have the same writing team. That's not going to save anything. Who cares about this at all? And I sort of wanted to explain why even with the exact same writing team, we could actually end up with much better stories this time around than what we've had for the last three expansions because fundamentally they now have a plan they know exactly where they're going to go and gardening writers when they have that plan when that plan is completely laid out for them can do phenomenal work anyways that's me i'm gonna stop wasting your time thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video hit the like button if you didn't hit the dislike button that is cool too let me know in the comment section down below if you agree with me or not, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Ladies and gentlemen, subscribe over on Patreon. $1 a month keeps this channel free from sponsorships that want to sell you stuff that you do not need. Legends, take care of yourselves. Peace. Ah, Luca! Bueno? Yeah! Pinyu! Uh.